Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talk. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the NASDAQ Felix Options Trading Floor is Sean Clark. He's the Chief Investment Officer of Clark Capital Management. It's great to see you. Hey, it's good As to be always, here. As always, yeah. the hot topic going to, to Q4 <laughs> is going to be the market impact with the midterm elections. Midterm elections, right. Yep. So what are we looking at? So we're seeing right now the market's at a new all-time high. S&P 500 is trading in record territory. The economics, the fundamentals are solid and strong. 4.2% GDP growth in Q2. Right now, Atlanta Fed's GDP now tracker is at 4.3% for Q3. Doesn't surprise us that we would see a little bit of volatility into the election, but interesting midterm election year statistics, historically speaking. Midterm election years typically have a, a certain pattern to them. They have a sharp correction early on in the year. Historically speaking, that decline on the S&P is about a 20% decline from where it peaks the year before or in the midterm year to a low, but then it rips from that low. Right. And historically speaking, dating back to 1932, the average gain into the third year of the president's term is 47% for the S&P 500. Now, we don't necessarily expect that to happen, mm -hmm. but if we do see any volatility or weakness right in here before the election, we think it will present itself as a buying opportunity to move forward well, it's really in the next year. Well, it's really interesting that you said, and you had just said before, corporate fundamentals look fantastic. Mm -hmm. Economic data has been as good yeah. as it has been for a number of years. Just because there might be some movement within the political spectrum of things, nothing has changed in terms of what we're seeing you know, on the market and, and economy side. Right. E even so, let's say the polls have it right. And let's say that there's a change in control of the House, mm -hmm. right? So, again, let's look at some his historical precedent. Right. Dating back to 1902, the median midterm election losses for an incoming president are about 28 seats in the House, and they lose a median of four in the Senate. For Republicans, however, that's a loss of a median of 18 in the House and a pickup of one in the Senate. So let's say we fall somewhere in the middle. Right. I still think there's a really good shot that the Republicans hold the, hold the Senate, lose the House. What do we have? Gridlock. That's right. not all that bad. Markets have historically performed pretty well. Given the fundamental backdrop, really good economics, solid momentum for the markets, really strong corporate earnings, the market's not extraordinarily expensive. When you look at a, a forward 12-month basis, it looks like the market still wants to move higher. You have the Fed that's hiking interest rates, but there's no recession on the horizon as far as we can see. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's interesting because next time we meet here in December, <laughs> all of this will have passed. That's right. So what other catalysts are you looking at outside of midterm elections? Um, Fed, right? Fed's likely going to hike rates again. It's almost a guarantee mm -hmm. next week and then probably again one more time in December. So let's right. see how the market handles that. Let's see what the shape of the yield curve looks like. Mm -hmm. It had gotten down basis 10 to three month, 10 year to, to 90 day T-bills. Got down to about 70 basis points. It's back up over the past month to about 90. So it's actually steepening a little bit, mm -hmm. which to us is building in better economic outlook right. into the future. Well, that, that will be a good thing. Even if we continue with the tightening, that in theory means that we are in a stronger economy, or it's getting to get stronger. So that is a good thing. It's a good thing. So another kind of tariffs. Right? Right. What, what, happens, what happens with tariffs? Right. The market responded really positively, mm -hmm. given that 187 or so billion dollars of goods, 10% tariff. If China plays nice, we'll stay at 10. If they don't, we'll go to 25% by year end. That's going to be really, right. it's going to be eye-opening to see what happens but, as we move forward in the next and year. And that's the whole thing. You might not see the impact on Q3. You might not see on the strong consumer spend expectations into holiday 2018. Mm -hmm. But you are starting to hear a little bit of trickles coming down that we don't know what it's going to look like going forward. And that is something you have to keep in the back of your mind. These tariffs have to go somewhere. They just don't float and go away. Like, that's right. It but trickles down somewhere. <laughs> it does. Uh, Goldman Sachs did a report that I saw the other day. Mm -hmm. Three, per, pardon me, three basis point of an impact of a rise in the PCE from these new tariffs that went on. If they were 25% tariffs, it would have been eight basis points. Right. Not a whole heck of a lot of an impact on inflation. If, I just, if we just sit back and look at every tariff announcement and the way that the market has responded with volatility, it's almost, it almost seems each time there's been new tariff spats, the volatility caused in the marketplace has been less and less right. and less. So I think the market is getting a little bit more accustomed to, to all that banter back and forth. Right. Well, I think a lot of this banter, too, used to happen behind the scenes. And now it's in the forefront. That's why it go. might be a little bit more shocking <laughs> to those of us that are watching it. Mm -hmm. So all right. I agree. That's good. Looks like there's some strong expectations going through the end of the year. You got it. Great to see you as always. Thanks. FLX, and you thank too. you for joining me throughout the day. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.